let's sit down my friends we could be here for a long time youtube team keep it clean what's going on sing raven here with another video and in this video i'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that we all watch between the ravens and the steelers um this game just to jump straight into it it seems like lamar jackson is broken right now it seems as if there's something that's just off way off with Lamar Jackson. Now, I know I've seen some people say, well, maybe it's because of the offensive line. Because all this season, the offensive line has been really bad, and he just has not had the time. He hasn't had the time. And that's true, he hasn't. But there even have been cases where he's had the time, and he's made bad decisions. Um, and, and one of the things with Lamar right now is that he has really been forcing it. He's really been forcing the issue. Lamar does not like to throw the ball away. It's either boom or bust with Lamar because it's either he's going for the big play, the big strike, or it's a bust because it's a fumble or a sack um, or just or interception. Um, so it's just he, he has been just off. In this game against the Steelers and in the game against the Browns, it, it, he has just been off. So it's like he's been going backwards. And, and, and I feel like he's had, sometimes he's had trouble like reading the field. And it's like, it's crazy because from his rookie year, this is something that he did so well. He's always done a good job of reading the field and, 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 and making good decisions. So I'm not sure what it is right now with Lamar Jackson, but something is broken. And the Ravens, they have to get it fixed ASAP. They have to. The defense held the Steelers to three points through three quarters. Three points through three quarters. That's an average of one point per quarter through three quarters. There is absolutely no reason that the Ravens should not have been up 17-3-20. And, and shout out to the Steelers defense now. But there's, there's no reason. There's no excuse. There's no nothing. The Ravens, they, they TJ Watt and, and Chris Wormley, they ate. They feasted on this offensive line. They feasted on Lamar all game long. It's like just when you thought T.J. Watt, when he was done making plays, he, oh, no, 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 uh, let me make another one. Oh, you know what, Lil, let me make another one. And it was like, what? Greg Roman in this game, he fooled me. He fooled me because early on, on that first drive where, and I've never seen this play all season, Lamar, he faked, like they, they brought Duvernay in motion. They, he faked the ball to Duvernay, didn't give it to him, but then gave the ball to Devontae Freeman. And Devontae got a nice little run. And I was like, oh, I said, okay, this, this, these are the plays that Giro is talking about are in his vault. I was like, all right, let's go. Then after that, mm, no. Mm. Now, in this game, I, I said, I don't think Giro called a bad game. I don't think he called a bad game because they were consistently giving the ball to Devontae Freeman. Uh, they were not doing a bunch of force feeding with um, Latavius Murray uh, or even Nate McCray. Nate McCray got some carries early. He got a couple carries in the game, but I think he only got like two. But he, he wasn't being force-fed like that either. But Devontae Freeman was clearly the lead back. And they were trying to get different guys involved. But my big question, now I feel like Giro overall, he called a good game. But I, my, I'm still confused on where and why is Rashad Bateman on offense? What is up with Rashad Bateman on offense? I'm not understanding this. I'm not understand why why he's MIA all the time. Like last week, he was in there in the first half doing his thing, but the second half gone. This week, it felt like he was even before the second half. What is going on with that? I don't get it. And if there's something that I'm missing about Rashad Bateman, please, y'all feel free to let me know because I would love to see it. But it, it just... This offense continues to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. 
It was only a matter of time, a matter of time before, even though this game should not have ended the way that it ended. But the offense continues to let these teams hang around over and over and over and over again. And it's sad because in this game, that wasn't even what bit them in the butt. It was their own stubbornness and, and their cockiness. And let's just talk about that two-point conversion play. Because I know there's been a lot of back and forth, back and forth about the two-point conversion play. Was it a good play? Oh, it was a great call by John Harbaugh on them. Some people say, oh, no, it was a bad call by John Harbaugh on them. So you always know you got to play to win. It's a terrible call. Terrible call. And John Harbaugh's excuse was because Marlon Humphrey's out. Because Marlon Humphrey, um, by the time you see this video, it probably will have already been confirmed that Marlon Humphrey is out for the season. But we'll see. Um, but with Marlon Humphrey, he's expected to be out for the season on the Steelers' last touchdown. When he tried to knock that ball out, he kind of fell awkwardly. They're saying either it's a torn peck or whatever it may be. Marlon Humphrey's going to be gone, though. But um, John Harbaugh's excuse for the reason why he decided to go for two instead of just kicking the extra point was because he didn't feel comfortable going into overtime without Marlon Humphrey. Wow, that's, that, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy because... I thought, don't, didn't, don't you have an offense that just went down the field and scored a touchdown? Don't, don't you have that? And, like, Marlon Humphrey, phenomenal player, great player. He's having a down season, been having a down season. But don't you have several other guys that have started before and could come in and play some corner for you? I feel like you do, but let me know if I'm wrong. So I just, I did not buy that excuse from John Harbaugh. I, I thought it was a pathetic excuse, in my opinion. I, I thought it was a pathetic excuse. Because if you, with the two-point conversion, if you get it, oh, great. And, and y'all know me. I, like I said before, if they would have got it, great. I still wouldn't have liked the call. I, I did not like the call from jump. Didn't like it at all. And I was really hoping that when Mike Tomlin and them, when the Steelers called timeout, I was hoping, like, oh, okay. Maybe, okay, the Ravens just needed to really think about that. All right, bring out Justin Tucker. Nope. Mm -mm. So I, I just, I, I hated the call because you go to overtime, and you've been in overtime, and you're, what, 2-1 and one in overtime? So because you lost to the Raiders, but then you beat the Colts, and you beat the Vikings. So, and, and y'all have been in some clutch games this year. So y'all have shown that y'all can do it. You've shown it. But still, then, then that takes me to this. It's so, yeah, so many different issues with these Ravens. But they're issues that we've been talking about for the longest, even when the Ravens win. So, Because I, I know that there have always been a lot of people, oh, well, look, look at the Ravens record, man. What are you guys complaining about? Look at the Ravens record. No, the Ravens, they are what their record is because they had won eight games and they lost three games at the time before this game. But they had these serious issues and the offense yet again Offense will be sluggish the entire game. They'll be slow the entire game. For three and a half quarters, this offense will be dead. Then all of a sudden, two-minute warning hits. Oh, we got a minute and a half left. Okay, let's do this. Let, let, let's loosen up. Let's get live, man. And it's like, why do you have to wait until the very end of, the, literally the very end of the game in order to do something? Why? For what? Why do you choose to do that? Every single game. Why do you choose to wait till the very end of the game to be like, all right, well, you know, it's time now. That's terrible. Terrible. And it's not going to be good enough. You can't keep doing that. You can't. But anyway, back to the two-point conversion. You went in overtime. If you would have played for overtime, I know some people, oh, man, well, the Steelers offense, they got hot. Well, Ravens offense, they literally just scored a touchdown, so I would say they were hot too. But you literally, you have an opportunity. You got a 50-50 shot. You can either, your team will either receive the ball or they'll go on defense. And just because your team receives the ball, it's not a guarantee that you'll get a touchdown. But also, on the other hand, just because your team kicks the ball, it's not a guarantee that you'll give up a touchdown. But... The Ravens were like, no, you know what? Forget that. Let's just let's 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 just go for two now. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. And even with that, so then, 
Um, the play call. Play call was a great call. It was a great call. Loved it. Loved, didn't love the call that they went for two, but the actual play call was a great call. T.J. Watt, he was like, I, I know where this is going. He came in. I, I think he was untouched because it seemed like he was in the backfield like, like, like he was a raven or something. He was back there. He was right back there with Lamar. But Lamar, for, for that, the pressure that he was uh, literally with T.J. Watt, like right there. Snap the ball, catch it. T.J. Watt's here already. It's like he came over with the ball. It's like he delivered the ball to Lamar or something. But Lamar made a good throw. Mark Andrews slowed up. He slowed up. He slowed up. And then he tried to catch up to it at the end. He slowed up. Now, could the throw have been better? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He could have put it right on Mark Andrews. Right in, right in the chest. But guess what? He had somebody right in his chest. T.J. Watt. The, the throw was good, especially given the given situation. And when you look at the context of the throw, look at who was right here, Lamar's face, look what Mark Andrews was. Mark Andrews, uh, 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 dropped it. But again, they shouldn't have even been in that position in the first place because they should have just kicked the field goal. Should have just kicked the field goal. Um, Mark Andrews, this game... He started the game off terribly because we forget. I know I have forgot initially because that whole ending sequence of the game was just so much. But Mark Andrews had two terrible drops. One of them, I can kind of give him a pass for. A little bit. Not too much, but he could have caught it because we've seen him make those catches plenty of times before. But the, the, second, the second drop that he had, easy catch, good throw. He just straight up dropped it. He straight up dropped it, dropped it, and it was like, what? Wow. Now, I said during the game that I knew Mark Andrews was going to make up for it. I knew he was, and he made some good plays throughout. He certainly did, but he started, the, he finished the game how he started it. Just bad play, man. Bad play. And again, Lamar, he, he had a bad game against the Steelers. He had a bad game. He missed some throws. He was holding on to the ball forever on some time. He, he would not throw the ball away. Bad game. And like I said, right now, Lamar is broken. He's broken. They got to get him fixed. And it's like it's almost like they got to go back to the basics. They got to go back to basics because Lamar is, again, boom or bust. Now, some improvement from Lamar. We noticed that he was taking some check downs. To Devontae Freeman, to Latavius Murray, and I, wow, I was so impressed with that. I, I love that, that he was actually taking those sometimes. But again, it was more plays where he was holding on to that ball, and he just wouldn't come off of that ball. And he was just like, man, I, I got to make a big play happen. And it was like, oh, man. There was actually a pick, and it's, it's like, I don't remember the last time this, this has happened, but there was a, a pick that number 25 from the Steelers actually dropped. Lamar should have had another pick, but they dropped it. I was like, oh, boy. Couldn't believe it. But Lamar, this game, bad, bad game. I just wish this offense would have the, the same urgency that when it's a minute and a half left on the clock, when it's a minute left on the clock, I wish they would have that same urgency when it's 15 minutes left in the first quarter, when it's 10 minutes left in the second quarter. I wish they would pick up the pace early on. It is so frustrating watching this offense every single week. And you're like, man, they got one of the best players in the league. They got Lamar Jackson. They got Sammy Watkins. They got Hollywood. They got Rashad Bateman. Like, you got Mark Andrews, one of the best tight ends in the league. It's like you got players. Now, I know the offensive line has been a big, a huge yikes. I know that. I know it. I know it. I know it. All right, G. Road, this offensive line is bad. Let's, let's change some stuff up. We, we cannot run the same offense as if we have the same offensive line. You can't do that. That's a re recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for failure. For failure, man. On that Ravens, that 99-yard touchdown drive, even, well, was it 97? Maybe, no, it was 99. It was 99, even though it was really um, 84 because they got helped by the refs, that 15-yard penalty 
for a taunting by T.J. Watt. Weak penalty. And I know I, there were some people that like, oh, yeah, well, they've been calling that all year in Graven. What are you talking about? It doesn't make it a good call. It doesn't make it a good penalty. Still a terrible call. Terrible call. T.J. Watt literally looked at Devontae Freeman. He stood over him, looked at him. Oh, 15 yards. Ravens got saved. They got saved. Even on the Ray Ray McLeod, where he mossed Marlon Humphrey. And they uh, Harbaugh challenged it. I thought that was a terrible challenge. I was like, what? What kind of challenge is that? What, what are we doing? Because we've seen so many times where the rule is, if the, even if the ball moves, if they got their hand under it, that's a catch. That's a catch. If they got their hand under the ball, even if the ball hits the ground a little bit and moves a little bit, as long as they got their hand under it and they got control, it's a catch. That should have been a catch. But Ravens got saved. Ravens got saved a couple times. And there was, a, there was a one more call, too. There was one more. I forgot what it was, though. But even with the help from the refs, they still didn't close the deal. Still didn't close the deal. Um, Devontae Freeman in this game, he looked better. He looked good, I mean. And he's been, excuse me, he's been, again, more and more comfortable. That's Excuse me, as the season goes on, he's more and more comfortable, which is a beautiful thing. We love it. Love it. Because we need it. He's not JK. He's not Gus. We don't expect him to be. But he, he's, he's been decent for these Ravens, man. And again, more and more comfortable. Um, I, I wish the Ravens would bring those RPOs back. I missed him. We missed him. Ravens missed him. Um... And I wish they would just kill those option plays. Uh, oh, I hate them. I hate the option plays so much. What a passion. Not as much as I hated that two-point conversion, the fact that they went for that. But I hate the option plays. Um, but this offense is just putrid, man. They are putrid. This offense is, is terrible. And that they are so consistent at being terrible through three and a half quarters. There's no urgency whatsoever. Zero urgency. They, I mean, we keep saying the same thing every week. They got to fix that. They got to fix it. But we keep seeing the same results every week. So what do we say now? Who knows? Um, Hollywood in this game, he didn't get so active, but he had some nice catches. Again, got, got some yak. Sammy Watkins, he got his first touchdown catch of the season. It's crazy. I didn't even realize that. I didn't realize that he didn't have a touchdown this season. I didn't think that he necessarily did, but I didn't really realize that he didn't. But it came at came at a great time. <laughs> nice. Um, Rashad Bateman. Again, we talked about him. He. I mean, you got to use a first round pick, and it's just been the weirdest thing. How it just flip flops. This dude is injured. He gets back healthy, and you play him so much for his first game. But then it's like his playtime has been decreasing over the weeks. And it's, I, I don't understand it. Um, so that, that was the offense. Special teams, Devin DuVernay, he got a nice kick return. I was like, oh, is he about to drop it? It looked like he was about to drop the ball, but he didn't. Um, Justin Tucker, you already know. He kicked touchbacks, kicked field goals, did his thing. What's new? Uh, defense. Again, kudos to the defense. Now. I don't think we sacked Ben Roethlisberger, not one time. I don't think we did. And you know what's crazy? That, that the statistic that they showed about um, the Ravens, like Lamar Jackson being the second most sacked quarterback in the league, that's terrible. That's terrible. But anyway, back to our defense. They, they didn't sack Lamar. I mean, they didn't sack Big Ben not one time. Uh, they almost picked him off a couple of times, but almost obviously didn't count. And it was like the one pick that bounced right into their arms, and they actually caught it. It was a pass interference on Anthony Averitt. No, Anthony Averitt, he, um, he struggled a bit this game. Uh, he certainly did. Marlon Humphrey, he had his struggles in this game as well. Uh, secondary just struggled. Tavon Young was in early on in the game. Then he got out. I guess he's hurt. Marlon Humphrey, uh, he, he, he had been having a, a down season for sure. Um... And now he's out, so it's like, man, like, jeez. Even our best cornerback, 
who was having a, a down year. He wasn't having the worst year, but he was having a down year, especially for his standards and for Raven's standards. Now he's gone. So Wink, is ooh, his, his job got that much tougher. It got that much tougher. Um, I didn't think that Wink caught a bad game tonight. Uh, I just was confused. Like the, a lot of times, I mean, same stuff. I don't think he, I, overall. I didn't think he called a bad game. Especially again, you hold the Steelers to three points to three quarters. Yeah. Um, but I just sometimes I just get confused. I, I and I, I did say that I would love to see the statistic when it comes to Chuck Clark and how much times he's blitzing versus how much times he's dropped back in coverage. And I feel like. I feel like the numbers would be so close. I feel like they would be so close. But I don't know, man. Um, nobody was... Usually we see somebody running wide open every game. We didn't see that today. Uh, only time we saw it was when Anthony Avery and Marlon Humphrey, they ran into each other. It was the only time we saw it. And then it, 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 was, it was sad when they showed the replay. When, when they did that, they collided, and it was Anthony Averitt's man. That was open. Uh, they showed this angle where they showed Marlon Humphrey looking at Avery, Anthony, Anthony Avery looking back at Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey looking at him. And Marlon Humphrey just went, oh. And you know that he was saying, oh, man, I miss Marcus Peters. Ugh. I miss MB. So it was just, it was sad to see the Ravens defense. And you know what? I, I couldn't even be mad at the Ravens defense. I could, what am I going to be mad at them for? These dudes held the Steelers to three points through three quarters. And then in the, in the fourth quarter, they just started coming apart. What am I going to be mad at them for? They've been holding it down for three quarters, and Ravens' offense was doing nothing with it. What am I going to be mad at the defense for? For what? No, man. No, defense had been doing it, and, and this has been something that's been happening a lot through this year. Where the, and we say this all the time. The defense, they show up, and the offense, sluggish. Sluggish. <laughs> Again, I've seen a lot of people uh, say, oh, man, well, Marlon's out for the year. Season's over. W was it really promising even with Marlon Humphrey still playing? With how this team is playing? With how this offense is playing? Now, again, it's any given Sunday. It's anything could happen. And you, you got to get in. And you got to get in the playoffs. To have a shot. That's where it starts, by getting in first. So they got to take care of that. But once they're in, anything could happen. But realistically speaking, this team, is, they, don't, they do not look like a contender. They don't. They don't. They are certainly battle-tested, but they don't look like a contender. Even if they would have won this game tonight, it just, they, they continued the same habits same habits. And you're, you're playing, like, Steelers have been down this year. Browns have been down this year. You play Browns again this weekend. The Browns looking at this game like, oh, yeah, and we at the crib next week. Oh, and we ain't got to go against Marlon Humphrey. Oh, boy. They looking at this game like, oh, yeah, come on, Ravens. Let's get it. We going pass heavy. That's how they looking at it. But... Again, even with those teams, you play this, you playing the Steelers again. You playing the Brown, but then you play the Bengals again too, and the Packers and the Rams. No Marlon Humphrey against Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, even Baker Mayfield and Big Ben and Joe Burrow. No Marlon Humphrey against Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. Tyler Boyd, and, and look look what they did with Marlon Humphrey there. Imagine what they're going to do without. Ooh. Ooh. Just imagine. Devontae Adams. Who, who's covering Devontae Adams? Huh? Who's covering Chase Claypool next time? Deontay Tyler. Like, who's covering these guys? Like, it's... Ravens got a lot on their plate. This coaching staff got a lot on their plate. These players got a lot on their plate. A whole lot. Because everything gets that much tougher. So, this is just a, this is a very frustrating game. And, but again, the, the saddest part was that uh, most, of our, well, most of my frustrations, I can't speak for everybody, but most of my frustrations, they come from the same exact place that they've been coming from for the longest. But my biggest frustration today 
um, was just that that ending. Didn't like it at all. Didn't like it. So anyway, Ravens are eight and four. Uh, with a tough task next week, coming off a rested Browns team. Uh, so we'll see how this thing goes. You know what's crazy? My wife, um, before the game, like hours before, uh, no, actually the night before the game, she was like, oh, are, are you nervous about the game tomorrow? I said, no. She was like, oh, really? She's like, oh, do you, you, you think we're going to win? I said, no. I just, I didn't see it happening. My guy JT, um, I had texted him maybe about like an hour before the game started. Maybe a couple hours before the game. Yeah, it was a couple hours before the game started. I told him, I just, I just don't see it today, man. I just don't see it. Because the Ravens, I was like, man, I, I, I don't feel like they're going to take advantage of their opportunity. Because, again, the, the Bengals lost. So it's like you could, you could have gotten an even firmer hold in the AFC North. It'd still be close. But, and, and then with a win, too, you would still remain in first place in the AFC. But I was like, I just, I just don't see the Ravens taking advantage of that. I don't. Now, I didn't last week either. I just felt like the game against the Browns last week. Because Ravens, whenever they're given an opportunity to, to handle, their, handle business and be like, all right, hey, Ravens, it's all on you. Do your thing. They usually squander it. That's all. That last game had me shook, too, against them Browns. But with Steelers, I just I did not feel like they were going to win. I felt like they could win. And they, they, they should have. But, you know, these Ravens, man. So the season, despite what a lot of people may say, the season is not over. <laughs> it's far from over. They got five games left. Uh, a lot of improvement to make. Is, will it be too little, too late? It's not. It's not too late. Cause again, you're, you're eight and four. But do they have enough reinforcements to make those improvements? That's the bigger question. So we'll see how they adjust or how they don't adjust. So. Team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you all for watching the stream. Thank you all for watching the game with us uh, and also watching the recap as well. Um, thank you for just supporting the channel. Uh, this has been a crazy, 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 crazy year. Uh, but it's been fun. It's all fun. We enjoy it. Whether the Ravens win, whether the Ravens lose, we enjoy it. We love watching this team. They, uh, they keep it entertaining. And that's what they're supposed to do. I love y'all. Y'all be safe. Y'all be good to each other. We out.